Hey everyone, how's it going? And welcome back to InfoGamer. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. It means so much to us that you guys are willing to follow along and make video games with us. Now in this video, we're gonna keep building our Super Mario Run clone. But if this is the first video that you've clicked on, make sure that you start at the beginning of this playlist so that you guys can create your own version of Super Mario Run. Also make sure that you like and subscribe to our videos and hit that notification bell so that you guys can get updates when we release new content. Now in our last video, we showed you how to add death zones to your levels to make your levels more interesting and fun for the people playing your game. This is a feature that's found in pretty much every Mario game out there. Now in this video, we wanna keep adding to the complexity and functionality of our levels and to do this we're going to show you how to create the question mark block which is another feature that's found in pretty much all Super Mario games. Now let's get started. So here we have our project open in Unity and real quick I'm gonna hit play so that we can make sure everything's working properly. So here we have our character he's running his animations are playing we can jump and wall jump works and if we get to this gap in the floor, we can make sure that our game over death scene is working. So it looks like everything's working properly. Now the first thing that we need to do is obtain the art assets that we're going to be using to create the question mark block. Now ideally we would want to create our own art assets or pay someone else to create them for us. But for the purpose of this video, and since we're crunched for time, I'm just gonna go out and look for the art assets on the internet. So here we wanna just bring up our favorite search engine. In this case, I'm using Google Images, and I've searched Mario question block texture. And I've found this texture here, which is a really good quality. Now I'm going to right click on this image and then say save image as. And then I want to make sure that I'm saving it in the correct location. So I'm going to go into our game folder and then go to assets. And then we want to save this into the textures folder. And I'm going to call this question, question block texture. The next texture that we need to go and find is the empty block texture. Now, after Mario hits the question mark block with his head, the texture will change to just a plain block texture. And it's a different block texture than what we've been using for our platforms. So to find that texture, I'm going to search Mario empty block. Now right here is a pretty good texture. The quality is just about the same as the other one. Now we have this white border that we're gonna have to get rid of. But let's go ahead and save this image in the same location and we're gonna call it used. That's a, that's a good name. So there we go, we've saved these textures. Now we need to get rid of this white border. So let's go ahead and open our favorite photo editor. And so in this case, I'm gonna open Photoshop, but pretty much any photo editor that has a crop option will work. So once it opens, I'm gonna go File, Open. Then I'm gonna find the location in which we saved our used texture. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. Once it's open, let's select the crop tool. So I'm gonna hit C, and then I'm gonna drag each side in so that there's no white remaining. Now there's gonna be a little bit of white in the corners, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Now, if I were spending a lot of time and I was going to publish this game, I would probably end up modeling uh, my own cube and then apply a texture that matches the UVs of that cube. And that way we could get rid of the white corners. But that should be good for now. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And I don't see any major there's a little bit up at the top. There's a little bit of white up at the top, but I think it's pretty good. And so let's go ahead and save that. We can go ahead and close Photoshop. Now back in Unity, we have our textures and they're saved in our textures folder. The next thing that we wanna do is create materials that we can apply these textures to. So I'm gonna to go to our materials folder, go right click, create material. And then let's call this question, question mark uh, mat. And then let's go to our textures folder and find our question mark or question block texture and drag it into the albedo field. Let's then go ahead and drag the smoothness down to zero. And then let's go ahead and create a new material for the used texture. So inside the materials folder, I'm gonna right click, create material. Let's call this used matte. 
Now let's go back to our textures folder, find our used texture, drag it into the albedo field, and then drag the smoothness down to zero. The next thing that we want to do is create the prefab that we're going to be using for our question mark block. So to do this, I'm going to go to our prefabs folder, and then I'm going to click on our levels folder, and I'm going to drag in the basic block prefab into the scene. Let's go ahead and rename this, and we're going to rename this to question mark mark block. Let's go ahead and zero out the transform. So zero, zero. Now we want to go ahead and apply the question mark material to this object. So I'm going to select our materials folder and then find our question mark material and drag it into the element zero of the materials field in our mesh renderer. Once we do that, we can now see that the material of this object has now changed to the material that we've applied. Now it looks like the question mark is upside down. Now there's a few things that we could do to fix this. We could either go back into Photoshop and rotate this image by 180, but I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this object by 90 degrees in the Y rotation. Now, once we resave this object as a new prefab, it's going to be a different prefab from the basic block prefab that we dragged into the scene initially and this is because we've renamed this object. So if you rename an object and then drag it into the file system, it's going to be a different prefab than what it was previously. And it's gonna save this object with the transform that we have here. Now, if I were to instantiate this object in the scene, I would need to specify that it is spawned with this rotation. Otherwise, if I instantiate it with a 0, 0, 0 rotation, the question mark will be upside down again. But we shouldn't really need to instantiate this object into our scene because we are building our levels beforehand. And so we can position this object wherever we want and we can make sure that it has this rotation. The next thing that we need to do is add an empty game object as a child to the question mark block. So I'm gonna right click on the question mark block in the hierarchy, then go create empty. Let's go ahead and rename this and I'm gonna call this hit zone. Now we wanna go ahead and add a box collider to this object. So I'm gonna go add component, type in box and then hit enter. And we wanna make sure that this is set to is trigger. Now we wanna position this box collider below the question mark block and we wanna make it a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and move down the center to negative 0.5 in the Y direction. So there we can see that it's hanging down below this box. And then let's go ahead and change the size in the X direction to 0.75 and 0.75 in the Z direction. Now what we want to do is add a new script to this child object. So I'm going to select our scripts folder, right click, go create, and C sharp. And then let's go ahead and rename this to question mark controller. Let's go ahead and open this in Visual Studios. Once you have it open in Visual Studios, we're going to start by deleting the start and update function. So there's a few variables that we're going to need. The first is going to be a public game object, and let's call this the pickup, pickup prefab. So this is the object that comes out of the question mark block when Mario hits it with the top of his head. So this could be a mushroom or a flower power or star power. In this case, we're just going to make it be a coin because that's the prefab that we have right now. The next variable that we need is for the used block material. And so this is going to be a public and then a material. And let's call this the used mat. Once you have these variables, let's go ahead and create a new function. And this is going to be a void function. We're going to call it the hit zone function. So. There we go, hit zone, and let's call. Now the first thing that we're gonna do inside this function is instantiate the pickup prefab. So let's call the instantiate function, and then we need to specify what object we want to instantiate. So let's call our pickup prefab object, and then we need to specify the position which we want it to spawn on. So let's just say transform.position, and then what we wanna do is we want to add uh, vector3.up. 
So this will instantiate the object one unit above the cube. Now, if we were doing like a mushroom or a star, what we could do is we could instantiate it here, and then the mushroom would have a starting animation, which would have it rise up from negative one position to zero, zero, zero. And that would make it look like the object is coming out of the question mark block. And once it comes out, then you could have a script controlling the mushroom to have it move in a certain direction. But that's for another video. So now what we want to do is instantiate the object with a specified rotation. So let's say transform.rotation. Let's end with a semicolon. The next thing that we need to do is set the material of our object as the used material. So let's say transform.parent and then we want to get component and we're looking for the renderer component. And the reason why we're getting it from the parent is because this script is going to be attached to the collider child object. So let's add parentheses and now that we have the renderer we need to get the material of that renderer. So let's say dot material and let's set the material equal to used mat. Now the last thing that we need to do is turn off the trigger zone of this object. So I'm going to get component and then we're going to look for a box collider. And let's get parentheses and then we'll say dot enabled and let's set it equal to false. So now we have this function that's doing all the work, but we need a way to call this function. And so let's use the on trigger enter. So let's say void on trigger enter and so we have a private void on trigger enter with the parameters of a collider and it's called other so now we're going to have an if statement and we're going to say other to get the parameter variable and we're going to say dot tag and we're going to check to see if it's equal to quotes and player then inside this if statement, we're going to just call the hit zone function, semicolon. Let's go ahead and save it. Now let's go back to Unity. Now we can apply the question mark block to our hit zone object. So there we go. Now we need to set the public variables of the script. So the first one is the pickup prefab. So let's go to our prefabs folder, find our coin pickup and drag it into that field. The next variable is the used material. So I'm going to go to our materials folder, find the used mat and drag it into that field. Now we need to add the player tag to our player game object. So I'm going to select our player, go to the tag, drop down menu and find player. Now player should be a default tag. And so you should just be able to set it to player without having to create a new tag. Now let's go ahead and test this feature to make sure it works before we create the question mark block as prefab. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And when our character goes beneath our cube, I'm going to jump and there we go. Looks like it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and save the question mark block as a new prefab. I'm going to drag it into the levels folder of our prefabs folder. And there we go. We have a question mark block. So now I can just click on the question mark block and drag it into the scene as many times as I want. And it's just putting them at the position of 0, 0, 0 with the transform of 90 degrees in the Y rotation. So that's probably enough. And now what I can do is I can click and drag and hold control and just drag these cubes to wherever I want them to be in our scene. Now once you have all your question mark blocks added to your level, you can then go ahead and expand your level game object. And we could then create a new empty game object to hold all our question marks. So I'm going to create an empty, I'm going to rename this to question marks. And then we can click on all our question mark block game objects and drag them as a child to our question mark game object. And there we go. Now that's all part of the level game object. So let's go ahead and hit play. So let's see if we can hit all these blocks. So it looks like it's all working. And I'll even see if I can collect that coin, which is pretty cool. Ah, I missed. Uh, there we go. Got it. 
So normally what you would do if you have coins popping out of the question mark block is you would have the coins register a pickup right after you hit the question mark block. And so to do this, you would have the coin pop out, but you would have an animation play. And immediately after the animation plays, the coin would delete itself and you would increment your score. So that's how that would work. So there we go. We've now created the question mark block. It's pretty cool and not that difficult. Now, I hope you were able to follow along. If there was anything that you missed, make sure that you go back and rewatch it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Once again, make sure that you like and subscribe to our videos and hit that notification bell so that you can get updates when we release new videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.